matching baby set of colors here. They Pink and me. baby blue. How very cute. And uh, he is, of course, playing Terran down to the uh, southwest here. And I was just actually thinking about, you know, talking about who's best Terran. I think Cass is best by far. And I'm thinking about the second best. There's not that many Terran players in Europe, really. Um, not really. I probably still put Thorzy in second, I guess. Beast of QT is pretty good. Beast of QT is not better than Thorzane, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, don't get Thorzane, me wrong, I love no. Beast of QT's play, but I'd probably he's not have to Thorzane. say Thorzane is second, so. Hmm. Yeah, it's like number one, arguably number one. There's always a toss up between Stefano yeah, and Nurture. Yeah, exactly, especially after Home Story Cup. But it, it keeps going backwards and forwards. Nurture will lose a tournament, and yeah. then people say, oh, no, Nurture is not as good as Stefano. Yeah. Then Stefano loses a tournament. I think they played in a cup today, actually, the a XMG Cup. And it was in the finals, and Stefano won 2 0. I think it was the Sennheiser, actually. Oh, I Sennheiser think, cup, yeah, I think okay. Sten, uh, Stefano snuck in a game yeah. uh, between the one what he was doing. Uh, and yeah. he beat Nurture 2 0. So yeah. Sadly, the XMG Cup decided to schedule on the yeah. same day as this, which I think was a fairly bad idea. Stefano, I think, is the better player, I think, because he's achieved more. He's had better results against Koreans compared to Nurture, because Nurture has had good results against Koreans, but not yeah. as good as Stefano has. Yeah. I mean, so Stefano is probably the better player there. So it's like the number one Zerg against number two Terran yeah. in Europe in the group stage. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. His Shadowcraft Invitational is like amazing. Yeah, the thing about uh, Thorzane right now is that he would be absolutely happy just to take one map, I think, but because that will put him through regardless. He yeah. goes he goes in, in second place, and it's not a huge yeah. disadvantage. It, no, it's good it's, to go through first, but it's not a huge disadvantage. It's very similar to IPL3, because IPL3 was such a stacked tournament, it didn't matter where you qualified and where you got put in the bracket, because it's just as hard. Yeah, And exactly. I think this is very similar uh, in this tournament as well. It matters a little bit, um, especially because considering the group, the next group, you know, you've got players like Grubby and so on. It depends who you want to play against and so on. Yeah, the uh, thing is that you don't know. Against. I mean, yeah. the, this group is finishing first, so you'll have no idea who yep. you end up going up against. Yep. So that, that would be kind of terrifying, I think. It, it would really suck if one of them went through first and then suddenly ended up against the guy they didn't want to go up against. Yeah. But you know what? That's how Sometimes tournaments are. Happens, yeah. That's how tournaments work, and these guys accept that because they are pro players. So anybody wondering exactly what Thorzane did is just pretty much standard, uh, though the gas was on 15 rather than 13 supply. Yeah. Um, so that enabled him to get the command center before the factory here as well yeah. and still have the factory on a decent time. Mm. And here on out, he can throw down the third command center if he wants to. He can throw down the reactor on the barracks and switch up. Um, or can even add an earlier second barracks or whatever, really. It's a lot of options still available to him. Meanwhile, Stefano's pretty much just going to play as standard as can be. Um, he's, you know, got the gas, got speed, taking out a gas, building up his drone count right now, builds a single spine crawl in anticipation for reactor hellions. Uh, and he, I doubt he'll take a fast, fast third base, but it will come down eventually. Well, someone's going to take a fast third base. Hello, yeah, Thorzane. Thorzane. He does this a lot. <laughs> he does yep. it a lot. And, you know, Stefano's a player that may even do Roachling or whatever. And apparently Thorzane hits a bit of a spike must be a personal issue because Stefano doesn't have. Well, I saw it actually oh. on my screen, so I'm not sure where that came from. Oh, I but didn't see. Yeah, that's oh, that's weird. weird. Well, I think uh, I not everyone likes at the same time. That's that's the funny thing about Battle.net, isn't it? Yeah. It's like there are universal like spikes, but sometimes... Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Oh, well, there's nothing we can do about it. It's just Battle.net being Battle.net. And Stefano should realize that, um, you know, <laughs> something's going on because the, the he knows, obviously, the command center was down first. Um, Stefano, <laughs> France are better Yeah, he knows the command center was first, obviously, because the factory was a little bit delayed. And it's really difficult for Zerg to take a third base against Hellion Openings because they can't. I mean, you only have Lings to defend it, and Lings without creep. Uh -uh, not going to work so well. No, no, absolutely So you not. either have to tech to layer and go Spire, or you have to get an early Roach Warrant and start pushing out with Roaches earlier on to start denying the Hellions. And it looks like we are going to see Stefano go to Spire by the looks of it so far. So far. I'm interested that the Evolution Chip wasn't at the front, which is an interesting decision. Yeah, a little not odd, honestly. A little yeah. odd. I have to wonder why you would do that, especially when there are Hellions on the way up. But I think Stefano is fairly confident with his ability to defend that. Oh, oh, ah. Oh. I was, I was doing that because a Ling almost got in, but Supply Depot is lifted in time. Yeah. Um, I guess the reason for doing it is because... Oh, double evolution chamber. Oh, Stefano, you do this so much, don't you? You little Ling heavy guy. Um, anyway, basically, the decision for having it at the back, because um, the Hellions... Thorzin isn't a heavy Hellion user. He doesn't build more than six or eight, so you don't really need a wall in against that. So I guess that's the reason for it. But what Stefano is going for is a lot, a lot of, lot of, lot of... 
upgrades on these links. He always does it, man. This is his style. This is what he was smashing Terrans down before Koreans started to study him and break him down. But Thorzine's a smart guy, man. He can also study immediately just like the Koreans can. Yeah, he's, he's ridiculously good in that respect. Yeah. And in fact, a lot of people knew him, I think, from the TSL as the guy who prepares and studies his opponents more so than anybody else. And exactly, yeah. he's, he's had a few days to do that in this tournament. He's known his group. He's known who he's been up against. And to be honest, you really need to study against Stefano. He runs up against him all the time. So he's been studying against Stefano perpetually, I feel, yeah. for probably the last few months at least. Yeah. So he knows what his opponent does, and he knows how to best counter it, but Stefano is probably the best ZVT in Europe at the moment. Oh, by far, yeah. Yeah, Stefano is so good. I mean, he broke down a little bit after playing, like, MVP and so on, but who wouldn't? MVP is... That's what I mean, MVP is for. MVP yeah. exists to say, oh, you? You think you're good? You're not that good. Yeah, exactly. I'm interested to see how Stefan is going to take a third because he's it's very long now. I mean, he's got a Roach one coming down as well. I guess it's try. Oh yeah, that makes sense. He can try to take the closer one, but oh, that drone shouldn't have been able to get out, and it's not going to. No, nope, it's not going to escape. Yes, yeah, you can see it's so difficult, and he's going to have to try and try and get a surround maybe. But then it's all down to does Thorzey make a mistake? So he has to get Roaches out. No, I don't, I don't like relying on the idea that Thorzane makes yeah. a mistake. That and seems like a bad idea. look how far ahead Thorzane is. Look at the supply difference. Just by building Hellions, just by not losing them, and the decision not to go Roaches early. It's a big difference. Look yes. at the amount of money that Stefano has. 2,000 minerals almost. That he hasn't spent, and he, c he can't he really can't. spend at the moment. Yeah. No, he's got nothing to spend it on. He's got a macro hatch up. I know that for a fact, but still... I. I don't think you can just... Sp you can't spend that. He doesn't want to spend it. He's going, oh, he doesn't whoa, want to build more links. early hive from Stefano right here. Well, that's one way to uh, deal with this this rubbish. This rubbish but, that is Hellions. But he's yeah, but open I mean, to a lot of Two timings. base hive? Yeah. Really? Yeah. How he's common got is money. that? He's got the money. That's yeah. the only kind of explanation for it. He has to take a third base though fast, like now. Yeah. He's got roaches out, so he should be doing it now. Um, I'm interested to see if he just throws down a Nautilus cabin. That would be the most reasonable response right now against Marine and tanks. Yeah, go yeah, definitely. For it. Yeah. Um, the upgrades are doing okay as well. And he's going to take a third base now. He may even take a fourth at the same time. But what I'm worried about is if Thorzain is too passive yeah. and doesn't poke. Because then this is going to work out really well. If Thorzain decides to scan or, you know, anything. Just poke a little bit. He's probably going to be able to win because Stefano has no units. Yeah, that's true. He has Those nothing. Those are just attack. Yeah, he has nothing. Yeah. And he's trying to go for fast ultras by the looks of it. But he's exploiting Thorzane. Thorzane yeah. has been known to do this. He's been known to just hang around and say, oh, well, I'm going to play passively for the time being. I'm pretty okay with that. And he needs to not do that. This time he needs to realize what's happening. Yeah, just a single scan in the main base would reveal everything. And yep. there is the ultras cavern. So, oh, Thorzane's pushing. Thorzain is pushing across the half. No, not quite. Don't stop. Just he keep stopped. going. Keep going, Thorzain. Keep going. Yeah, he, and he has to go. He, he must. I, I think that... He has to... The thing is, he's going to go anyway, because the scan just went down, and he's, he loves... Yeah. He knows what he's up against here, in the terms of the Infestors. He knows about the creep spread. He knows about the third. And he can probably also predict the fact that, you know... That was a... Is that actually a triple expand? It is a triple expand yeah. there. And... I think but now I've what's going to happen is the Hellions ones. are going <laughs> to go up to the third base. Yep. Thorzane will move down slowly and cut that base up. He's already cut the top one off, and he's going to try and cut the third one off. The problem is, oh, Stefano doesn't have enough gas really to build Ultras, does he? He's at 200 gas. 300 he he gas. will soon. He's grabbed three bases. He needs to start gathering gas immediately. Yeah. His priority needs to be building the, uh, that gas he as quickly as possible. Very, very limited time right now. Adrenal Glance is coming as well, and there comes a drop, actually. It's a very small one. Yeah, well, uh, maybe it's, it's uh, that's, a, that's the smallest drop I've ever seen. In fact, that's that just... Two Ultras. Two He's going to be in mm. such for us. Uh, it's 13 minutes. He's going to be like, what the hell, Ultras? Why, is ult why are the Ultralisks happening at 13 minutes? Yeah. How are the upgrades for Thorzane? One zero, two one soon. One attack almost. I'm not... Stefano is waiting for three Ultras, and then he's just going to go, I think. Uh, we we explain what those Infested Terrans were all about, because that was a waste, in my opinion. Obviously, oh, landing there is good. Yeah, it's just he threw about seven Infested Terrans just to die the, at the front there and didn't do any damage with them. But whatever the case, Thorzane has lost the tank, but that's not really a problem. He's bringing in another one with and redeploying. How many Infestors? Three Infestors, he's got about five Fungals, 
Ultras have now been spotted. Uh oh, he's been spotted. Yep, yep. Thor's Zane knows. He knows exactly what's going on now. Bit of a spike there. I yeah, I, I just got time. a huge lag spike. And that here one. we go. Yep, Ultras and Lings now overrunning this siege line, and Thor's Zane needs to stim and do damage as much as he can. But the siege line just got oh, annihilated. Five seconds for plus two carapace to kick in, but. Yep. It doesn't matter, man. He lost Thorzins. most of the tanks, but none of the Marines went down, so... Yeah, it just doesn't have enough. They're not that well upgraded. Fungals didn't hit. And Thorzane wins the first map. And by most well, likely. Most likely right now, yeah. it's very hard to win with pure lings against what's been set up right now. And by that, he's knocked Night End out. Yeah, he will do. He, he, yeah. you know, Night End will be out under the bunkers, even in place as well. And this is, you know, this strategy from Stefano came from a reliance on Thorzane being too passive. And you know what? Thorzane decided, no, I'm going for it. And he did exactly the right thing at the right time. Yeah. Look at that. Just yep. Ling's getting yep. slaughtered. It, if he'd been more passive, if Stefano had been able to establish these bases and mine gas from them as he's doing right now, then yes, he would have had enough Ultras to smash Thorzane. But there you go. Thorzane wins the first map, ladies and gentlemen. GG, and incredibly well played there by Thorzane. A curious strategy from Stefano, but honestly, in that position, you can see his thinking, certainly. Yeah. And that, as far as we can tell from our calculations, that means Thorzane is definitely through to the round of four at this rate. Yeah. As to what position he's in, well, that's going to depend on the rest of this series. Exactly, and that's what we're going to find out now as I get ready to host up on uh, Antigua Shipyard, which is Stefano's map choice, of course. He loves it all the time. We get these invites running around, and then we can pretty much get ready to begin. Yes, but we yeah, can. A, yeah, nice short and sweet first game there. Relative to the rest of our games, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that was yeah. short, you know, that was a 16 minute game. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we've been having a lot of lengthy games, folks. And this will be the last game in this group. And then we'll take a short break and we'll go into the next group, which contains Grubby, Red Cloud, and Socky. Yeah, it's a really good group, too. They're both good really, groups. Really we love them group. both equally. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good. No doubt so, about that. Quick ad break, folks, and then yeah. we'll be right back. <laughs> 